Okay, everybody. So I'm going to do another example here of a proof. Um, and it, again, I've taken this one. I've taken the, the statement of the theorem directly from the book. But I want to approach it in a slightly different way, which is more illustrative of how the mathematical process might actually play out in, in real life. So um, this material is uh, towards the end of 4.3 on pages 122 and 123 of the text. So uh, pages 122 to 123 of the text. I guess you can't see that. I'll put it over here. Pages 122 to 123. And it's not called this in the book, but this is essentially what they prove. It's called the arithmetic geometric mean inequality. So uh, a couple of definitions. The arithmetic mean or the average of two real numbers is what you get if you add them together and divide by two. So that's this definition. And the geometric mean is what you get if you multiply them together and you take the square root. Uh, and so one way to think about this is that it's kind of like the uh, you average the logarithms and then take the exponential. They're both useful in different situations. Uh, and the theorem which is, um, or the proposition which I, I want to prove is that if A and B are positive real numbers, then the geometric mean of A and B is always less than or equal to the arithmetic mean of A and B. So this is called the arithmetic geometric mean inequality, and um, at least for two numbers. And, and so this is what we're going to look at. So the first thing we can do with a, with a problem like this is to translate it into a, a question which is maybe more algebraic and so we can make some sense of it. So what I've done here is I have taken the definitions and rewritten the proposition, inserting the definitions so that I can see what it is that we really need to prove. So this is the geometric mean of A and B. And this is the arithmetic mean of A and B. And so what we need to prove is that for positive numbers, and you can see why A and B have to be positive, that doesn't matter so much for the arithmetic mean, but it matters for the geometric mean because you want to be taking the square root of a positive number. Uh, we want to prove that the square root of AB is always less than or equal to A plus B over 2. So um, what I've done, I mentioned in the uh, previous video is that in, in real life you don't know why this is true and you have to do some experiments and you have to do some calculations. So let's let's just see why we think this might be true. So how, how might I approach this problem? So I'm trying to show that the square root of AB is always less than or equal to A plus B over 2. That's what I'm trying to show. So what can I do? Well, I can square both sides of this. So if I do that, I get that AB is less than or equal to A plus B over 2 squared. Now, is it true that if you take an inequality and you square both sides, it's still an inequality? Well, uh, that's a question we should, we should worry about. I mean, we just, we just used a little lemma. We just said that if a is bigger than or equal to b, then a squared is bigger than or equal to b squared, right? Sounds true. Let's just set it aside for the moment. If, if, I mean, I, if, if, if we start decide we doubt it, we can look at it more closely. OK, so now we've got a, b is less than or equal to a plus b squared over 2. So we can, um, I could put the, the, four, the 2 squared on the other side, and I get 4ab is less than or equal to a plus b squared which is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So I didn't do anything. Here I multiplied both sides of an inequality by 4, but since 4 is positive, we know that doesn't change the inequality. So that's safe. And now I get sort of see what's going on here because I can move the 4ab to the other side, and I get a squared minus 2ab plus b squared, and that's a perfect square. That's a minus b squared. And now if I look at this calculation, I see that I should, what I'd like to be able to do is to read it backwards, because this is certainly true. 
for any a and b, right? Because any square is bigger than or equal to zero. And if this is true, then this is true. Because to get from here to here, all I've done is expanded out this square, right? And then subtracted 4ab from both sides. Oh, sorry, added 4ab to both sides. So to get from here backwards, I added 4ab to both sides. And so now this is true. And now how did I get from here to here? Well, this is just algebra. I divided both sides by 4, and I moved the 4 inside the squared. And so there's nothing fishy there. And then I did this. And, and whereas when I was going the other direction, what I did was square both sides of the inequality. When I'm going back, what I had to do is to take the square root of both sides of the inequality. And these steps are completely obvious. This is the one that bothers me, okay? Because is it the case that if you take, the, I mean, certainly uh, you have to be careful about signs and it's not, um, not something to take for granted. So what, what happens in this situation is we did a sequence of algebraic manipulations. The proof itself amounts to giving those arithmetic or algebraic operations in the opposite order but there's one step that we need to worry about. And that step is this, this very first step, which we could write in one of two ways, but I think the, one, the way we're going to use it is we need to know, need to know if A is bigger than or equal to B is square root of a bigger than or equal to square root of b. Here, but where both sides are positive. And so what we do is we pull that out of the problem and it becomes a lemma. Remember I said a lemma is a result that you need, in, a small result that you need in order to establish a big result. So the small result that we need is that if a and b are positive and a is less than or equal to b, then the square root of a is less than or equal to square root of b. And here, it's very important to remember that square root of x means the positive square root of x, because of course x has two square roots, a positive and a negative one. But here we're only worrying about the, um, the positive square root. So let's leave this lemma for the moment. And then we can go back to our the proof of our original proposition, and it looks like this. So remember, what we're basically going to do is to read this calculation that we did in reverse. And so it, when presented that way, it, it can seem like magic. So you see, I start out by saying we know that a minus b squared is positive because any square is positive. Therefore, a squared plus b squared minus 2ab is bigger than or equal to 0. And so a squared plus b squared is bigger than or equal to 2ab. Add 2ab to both sides, and you get a plus b quantity squared is bigger than or equal to 4ab. Now take the square root of both sides, and you get a plus b is bigger than or equal to, square, to 2 square roots of ab, and you divide by 2, and you get the desired result. Presented this way, it looks like magic. I mean, how did we know to start with a minus b squared bigger than or equal to 0? Well, because we had secretly done this earlier calculation. And a lot of mathematical proofs can look like this. They can look like magic because the work that went into doing them was hidden. And some people even enjoy this aspect of mathematics. They think that if you write a good proof, then it can seem like magic. Um, I'm not so sure that that's helpful to the reader. OK, so what about the lemma? Why is it the case that if a and b are positive and a is less than or equal to b, then the square root of a is less than or equal to the square root of b? Well, um, one way to approach this is to look at b minus a, which is bigger than or equal to 0. And this, uh, we're interested in, we're given this. And we want 
that the square root of b minus the square root of a is bigger than or equal to 0. And here there's a trick where um, notice that the square root of a plus the square root of b is bigger than or equal to 0. We know this because it's the sum of positive numbers. So when we multiply them to these two things together, we multiply square root of a plus the square root of b times the square root of a minus the square root of b. Sorry, square root of b minus the square root of a. This is b minus a because it's the square root of b squared minus the square root of a squared. So I'm using the uh, the fact that a squared that u squared minus b squared is u minus v times u plus v. And this is b minus a. So we know that, um, what have we got here? We know that b minus a is bigger than or equal to 0. And we know that the square root of a plus the square root of b is bigger than or equal to 0. And so essentially what we have done is to divide both sides of this equation. We, we have b minus this is equal to the square root of a plus the square root of b times the square root of a minus the square root of b. And so we've divided both sides of this equation by a positive number, the square root of a plus the square root of b, and we get the result that we want. So to clean this up, we could do the following thing. We, so this is the, the hidden part of the argument, because we did this on scratch paper. And now for the proof, we would say, uh, we're given a bigger than or, a b bigger than or equal to a, and therefore b minus a is bigger than or equal to zero, and therefore b minus a, which is equal to the square root of b plus the square root of a times the square root of b minus the square root of a, is bigger than or equal to zero, and since square root of b plus square root of a is bigger than or equal to 0, we can divide both sides. Sorry, I should say bigger than 0. Because positive means strictly bigger than 0. We can divide both sides of this inequality by square root of b plus square root of a to obtain square root of b minus square root of a bigger than or equal to 0. So square root of b bigger than or equal to square root of a. So this is our lemma. And uh, once we have the lemma, then the original proof of our theorem goes through.